Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Javier. Today, this is part four of the Forestry Mod tutorial series. I aim to give you a full and comprehensive look into Minecraft modded. And today, we're going to be going through the Alviary, Advanced Bee Breeding, Butterflies, and Advanced Tree Breeding. So, we're actually going to go through all of the different breeds and the ones you need. So, these are branches of different bees, and some bees will give different effects, need different flowers, they'll give different combs, and you'll need certain for building larger alviaries later. So the first one we're going to go through is the common branch. You're going to want to breed a forest with a meadows to get a common queen, and then you're going to use any basic, so a common and then a meadows, and that will get you a cultivated. Now, the cultivateds are actually fast workers. These all need flowers to produce combs, and the combs they produce are honeycombs, which give you beeswax and honey drops. Next up, we have the noble branch, and you're going to use a cultivated with a common to then get your noble, and then you're going to want to use your noble and your cultivated to get a majestic. Now, majestic actually are maximum fertility bees. So these will give always four drones when breeding. So when the queen dies and it, you get a princess and your drones back, these will always give four drones. And this is where you can breed in like that trait to your other bees so that they all give four drones, etc. if you're trying to get as many as possible. And then your majestic and the noble go together to get a imperial. Now these all give dripping combs and they all like flowers. The imperial bee actually has a regeneration effect. So when you're near the hive, it'll actually regenerate your health, which is really, really cool. And also the Imperial Queen, alongside dripping combs, which by the way, give honeydew and honey drops. And this is always in a centrifuge, by the way. They also give royal jelly. And royal jelly can be used in a plethora of things. For example, ambrosia, databases, and also mainly, we're gonna be looking at today, scented paneling. Now, things like dissipation charges and things like that, I went over in my first video. Now, scented paneling is what we're gonna be using in the alveary. So these are really, really useful, these imperial ones. Then we've got the industrious branch. Here, you're gonna get, again, your common and cultivated, and it also has a chance to get, rather than noble, it has a 10% chance to get a diligent queen. Diligent and cultivated then give you the unweary, and a diligent and unweary then give you the industrious. Now, again, these all give stringy combs, and the industrious, alongside giving stringy combs, also gives pollen clusters. And now they are the only bee to actually produce these pollen clusters. So a stringy comb will give you propolis and honey drops, and then the pollen cluster can be used to make slime ball, which is really useful, and then you can use it, again, you're going to need it in the scented panelling. Then we have the heroic branch. So steadfast bees are only found within dungeon chests. These give cocoa combs, which obviously give you cocoa. And then valiants are actually, they're a rare drop from hives. So when you're going around hitting your hives with your scoops, you have a rare chance to get a valiant queen. It's probably like 5% or something. They're not super, super rare. You do see them quite easily. And they can also be found in dungeon chests. And these actually give a 15% chance to give sugar alongside a 30% chance to give the cocoa comb. The cocoa comb, of course, gives beeswax and cocoa beans. Now, you breed these two together and you get a heroic bee. A heroic bee can only be created in a forest biome. And it has the heroic effect, which fights mobs. And it has a 40% chance to give a cocoa comb. Then we have the infernal branch, where you'd use a modest and a cultivated bee to get a sinister. Sinisters can only be created in the nether, and they have an aggressive effect. This is where your apiary cloves come in that are going to protect you from these negative effects. And these actually produce simmering combs, and a simmering comb will give you refractory wax and phosphor. And phosphor can be used to squeeze out lava which is a very useful way of getting that. The cultivated and a tropical can also make a sinister bee. And just an FYI, all of these bees in this tree will give simmering combs. You then have the sinister queen and the cultivated together to get the fiendish. The fiendish will actually give you a 15% chance to get ash as well. And then you could use the 
fiendish queen with a sinister queen. I used to stop saying queen. It's a drone of a princess, but you breed them together to get to get the queen. A demonic queen, and that actually gives glowstone, which is really cool. And again, these can only be created in the nether. Next up is the monastic branch. These are traded via traders, and they're the only way they can be found. They give wheat and like wheat and combs. So I don't really get the point in these being traded and it's like they're not really that useful so that's how you get the monastic if you then breed it with an austere bee which we'll find in the next branch which is the austere branch you will then get a secluded again these give mellow combs which in a centrifuge give honeydew never quartz and beeswax so it is useful there and the monastic give uh wheat and comb as well, which is which is wheat, honey drops, and beeswax. Put the monastic with a secluded, you'll get a hermitic queen. And what these give is a 20% chance to give a mellow comb, which is again for never quartz. And these will like wheat nearby rather than flowers. So the austere branch is the modest branch. If you put a modest with a sinister, you're gonna get frugal. These are all gonna give parched combs. And then the frugal with the modest will actually get you an austere. And the austere is going to give you some powdery combs as well. So parched combs is boring old beeswax and honey drops. And then powdery combs is gunpowder, which is really useful. So modest are nocturnal, by the way. And they like cacti nearby. And then the frugal can only be created in a biome with a temperature of 190 to 200% and humidity of 0 to 10%. Be careful with the austere, because they actually have a creeper effect. Now, I'm assuming that the apiarist cloves protect against this, but do double check before putting these to your base. The austere have creeper effect, and they actually explode with players nearby, and they can also only be created in a biome of temperatures of 190 to 200%, and humidity of 0 to 10%. Then we have the end branch. So you're gonna get these from your end bees and these give mysterious combs, which are then gonna give you pulsating propolis and honey, pulsating propolis, I can't say it, gives you pulsating mesh, which is used in the carpenter to get ender pearls, very useful. You are then going to breed this with a hermetic queen, which we've already seen. This is gonna give you spectral, which is a higher chance to get the mysterious comb. Ender and spectral give phasmantle, and they give a mysterious comb as well. Then it is on to the tropical bees. Tropical with an austere will give you exotic. By the way, all of these bees like jungle flowers, which are vines. These will give you silky combs. Once you've got the exotic, you breed that with the tropical and get an edenic. So exotic actually produce silky combs the fastest. Do be careful of the tropical ones because they have a poison effect and the edenic will actually give you experience. That's the explorer effect. And the silky comb can be put in a centrifuge to get silky propolis, which can be used for a variety of things in crafting. For example, bitumous peat, letters, and genetic filters. Then it's the frozen branch of bees. So you're gonna get the wintry bees from the snow hives. They have also a maximum fertility of four, just like the Majestic, and they have a freezing effect. They are going to give you frozen combs, which you can centrifuge to get crystalline pollen cluster, snowballs, honey, and beeswax. You're gonna breed those of an industrial to get an icy queen, and then you're gonna to wanna to put your icy queen with wintry to get glacial, and glacial, etc. So, sorry, icy and glacial both give ice shards. Ice shards can be put into a squeezer to get crushed ice, and you can also put snowballs in there. Next up is agrarian. So you're gonna to wanna to put your meadows with a diligent and you will get a rural queen. They must be produced in a plains biome. These also give wheaten combs. Put your rural with an unweary and get farmily. And this will give a higher chance to get wheaten combs, which give you, again, wheat, which we saw earlier. And then a family of an industrious will get an agrarian bee and that has a higher chance to get wheat and comb. Again, not super useful. And lastly is the boggy branch, which is the marshy one, which is from a swamp hive. They want mushrooms. Put that with a noble bee. You're gonna get a miry one. 
And then a Myri with a Marshy is going to get you Boggy. These will all get you Mossy Combs. And then the Boggy one can actually have an 8% chance to get you Peat. So that is it for the bee breeding branches. There are actually a lot more different bees that you can breed, but they actually come from add-on mods to forestry. And I will be doing further videos about those separately. There's the mod Magic Bees. There is also Binny's Extra Bees, which adds like 112, I think, extra different breeds of bee. So these are just the ones that the main forestry one adds. I'll then go on to the bees that the other mods add in individual videos, one for each mod, for example. So this is the Alviary, and it's a 3 by 3 multi-block, and then you put slabs all on the top to finish it off, and that's when you'll see these little hives, and you know you've done it right. Now... The alveary doesn't have any spaces for frames. However, when you put the bees in the alveary, they actually produce more combs than you would even have with three frames in an apiary. So don't worry that it hasn't got access for frames. This is still better. And you could put your bees in here. They'll work absolutely the same, apart from these extra bits you can add in. So to make the alveary, again, as I said, it's a three by three structure. So you need the alveary block, which is eight scented paneling and an impregnated casing. An impregnated casing is eight logs with some seed oil in a carpenter. And then the scented paneling is where from earlier you'll need your royal jelly and pollen clusters. So it's three planks, one royal jelly, two beeswax and one pollen cluster in a carpenter with some honey. And you're going to need quite a lot of these because, as I said, it needs eight just to make one alveary block. And then you can see we've got these add-ons. So the first off is the alveary swarmer. And the way to make this is with four diamantine electron tubes, two gold ingots, and an alveary block. If you don't know how to make these, check out my first video in the series. The alveary swarmer, what this does is you put in royal jelly into these slots here and you can access it. So you can access the main alveary and then you can access the swarmer separately. So you put in royal jelly into the swarmer and on quite a large radius, you can see one over there. Um, I think that's it really, just one there. We can see there's one quite far over there. These will start these swarmer hives. And when you break the swarmer hives, you're going to get princesses and drones that are from the same genes of the one in your alveary. But the only difference is they will die off after a few generations. So it's a really good way to get loads more drones. And if you're trying to pollinate a big area, etc., these swarmer hives are really useful for that. But after a while, they will stop producing princesses and then obviously die off. Next up, you have the alveary fan. And this is made by four iron ingots, one alveary block, and a golden electron tube. And what this does is it cools down the alveary. So if you have a bee that needs a cooler place to live, you put the fan in there. The heater does the opposite. This one heats the alveary up. And this is three stone, one alveary block, one iron ingot, and two golden electron tubes. Then we have the hydro, high grow regulator, sorry. And this is going to do the same except for the humidity. This is made with six glass, one alveo block, and two iron ingots. Then we have the stabilizer. This is made with six quartz and one alveo block. And what this will do is it will stop the bees within your alveo from mutating. Then you have the sieve. Now, when your bees go out and pollinate some trees, and to be honest, I don't think this alveo is probably close enough to the trees over there to pollinate them. In the sieve, when the bees go out and pollinate the trees, they will get pollen, and we'll be going on to that shortly regarding tree breeding, but you can get the pollen in here. So, for example, if they had made a hill cherry pollen, they'd gone out and they had crossbred a tree, they'd got some hill cherry pollen. So you can, imp you can put the pollen into the leaves here, use your grafter, it's gonna guarantee a sapling. So rather than the, the trees crossbreeding via pollination and then you having to run around and find it, the sieve means that you'll actually get the pollen. You can go and stick it in the tree yourself and get it out rather than having to go around and search for it. Now I have got my spectacles on so I can see where pollinated trees are. And this is two stained glass panes and bronze ingots. And you can see them anyway, it just makes it a bit brighter. And if you have shaders on, it can be quite difficult to see the pollinated leaves sometimes. So the spectacles do help. But for example here, 
This is a cross-pollinated leaf, as you can see, where the bees have cross-pollinated it. And you just hit it with your grafter, and that's how you get the new sapling, which is really cool. So you put the trees near each other so that it can actually cross-pollinate. So you could have some bees down here, or like I've set up here, you have a few hives near two different trees. This, these bees in here would then start cross-pollinating these two trees, and you'd get, for example, the next tree. So let's go on to what tree breeds you can get. First you have the apple oak and these are going to give apples. This is the dark oak, which is the same. Silver birch, again, same as the Minecraft version. And you've also got the jungle one, which is the same as well. So next up we've got the silver lime. And this is going to be an apple oak and a silver birch pollinated together. Common walnut. And this is going to be a hill cherry with a silver lime. And you're going to have to put the saplings in a two by two space. And this will give walnuts, which you can see here, but I'm in creative. <laughs> then we have chestnut. This is also another two by two. And you can either use the common walnut with a hill cherry or a silver lime with a common walnut to get the chestnuts. And that will, of course, give you chestnuts. Now, this is the cherry tree and you can use the apple oak or the silver birch with a silver lime to get this one. But you can, again, already find this out in the world. This will also produce a lot of butterflies nearby as well. This is the lemon tree. This is a silver lime and a hill cherry, and this will produce lemons, of course. Next up, it's the plum, which is a lemon tree and a hill cherry. Then we have the sugar maple, which is a red spruce and a mundane larch. Or you can either use a red spruce and a silver birch as well on that one, actually. But there's the red spruce. I'm, I do apologize for these not being in the correct order. Again, here is the mundane larch. This is a apple oak with a red spruce or a silver birch and a red spruce. And that's gonna give you the mundane larch. Then we have the bull pine, which is a mundane larch and a red spruce. This is the I don't remember how to say this. Coast Sequoia? Sequoia? And that is a bull pine and a mundane larch. You're going to have to put the, the saplings for this one in a 3x3, three three, so a space like this. And then you can use bone meal on them or just let them grow naturally. But you will need to use 3x3 three three for this gargantuan tree. Then we actually have the giant version. The saplings here need to be placed in a 4x4 four four area, and you can't actually breed this tree, but villagers rarely will sell the pollen for it. So then you use the pollen you buy from the villagers on the leaf blocks of the coast version here, which you can breed, which we just showed. Then these pollinated leaf blocks you obviously break with a grafter, and then there is a chance you get the giant version sapling. Because it's then going to need to be in a 4x4 four four area, you're going to need 16 saplings to actually grow the tree. Once you've actually grown the tree, it may actually have genetic traits of the coast one. So it's actually recommended to analyse all your saplings you get from this one to make sure you pick the most desirable one. And when placing the 4x4 four four sapling, using bone meal only on the chosen sapling will cause the tree to grow in with that genetic template. So if you have a 4x4 four four and you're using bone meal, say, on this one, then that tree that grows is going to have the genetic traits of that sapling. And then that also means that when you harvest all of the saplings from that tree, they're going to have those desired traits. So be very careful if you're doing that. Then we have the jungle one, which obviously is in Minecraft anyway. Teak, which is a jungle and a dark oak. This is Ipe, and this is teak and dark oak. This is Kapok, which is jungle and teak. This is a myrtle ebony, and this is going to be Kapok and a dark oak. Then we have Zebra Wood, which is a myrtle ebony and a white poplar. This is a blue maho, which produces mahogany wood. This is produced of a balsa and a desert acacia. Then we have the acacia. <laughs> then we have the desert acacia which is a teak and a balsa. Then we have Padawak, which is a desert acacia and a silver lime. A balsa, which is a teak and desert acacia. Then we have the Cocobolo wood, which is my favorite to pronounce. The Cocobolo is made from a desert acacia and a dark oak. 
A Wenge is up next. That's a Coco Bolo and a Balsa. That's going to give you the Wenge tree. Next up, you've got the Grandidier's Baoab sapling, and that is a Balsa and a Wenge. That, it looks like this. this is another large one. Then you've got the Blue Maho, which is a Balsa and a Desert Acacia. Then you've got the White Willow, which can be made either from a... Wait, a white willow. I swear there's something weird about this one. Silver limes and apple oaks or silver birches. And this can only be grown in a biome of a temperature of 70 to 150% and humidity of 90 to 200%. This is the sapiri tree. This is made with a capoc and a yellow moranti. Then we have papaya, which is silver lime and a hill cherry. Then we have a palm wood, which is a desert acacia and a silver lime. And last but not least, there's the White Poplar, which is from the White Willow with the Silver Birch, Silver Lime, or the Apple Oak. And that is all of the different trees that Forestry itself adds. Now, again, there are other mods like Binny's Extra Trees that add a lot of other breeds, and I will go through those in another separate video because there are so many, it's absolutely insane. Now, last but not least is butterflies, and unfortunately, butterflies are actually not a fully implemented part of the forestry mod, and it's a real shame. You can catch them with the scoop, and then analyze them in your analyzer. I have seen some guides saying that all forestry trees will actually spawn butterflies, but I do not believe that's true. I think it is only the hill cherry that actually spawns them, and you can definitely see it by, like, down there when we were going through it. There are no butterflies around. They all definitely seem to be around here. I have also heard that they can actually cross-pollinate tree trees, but at a very slower rate than bees do. However, I can't confirm this because, again, they aren't actually very well implemented. You can put them in an analyzer and analyze them. If we take the blue duke butterfly here, for example, again, it's, it's with honey. You can see how si small it is, the lifespan production metabolism metabolism fertility but and you know where it's going to live the cocoon loot but from what i've actually seen actually being able to breed these butterflies to get them etc seems in impossible there doesn't seem to be actually any way of getting the cocoons and it, that's also the same with these larvae from the bees there are mods that actually add in hatcheries, I think it is, for the alveary. And you can then use these larvae and imprint their genes into other bees, etc. But in forestry itself, without any add-ons, the larvae, there are no way to get them. And there's also no way to use them. So when you're looking through here thinking, hmm, in all these tutorials I'm watching, they're not talking about it. Well, that's because it's actually not a fully implemented part of the mod. Unfortunately, there are things like binnies that will add into that and actually help expand on that a little bit. I will be going through those in further videos. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there are any queries, again, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to help you. Do also click that subscribe button, guys. I am releasing these videos weekly from now on. These are every single week. There's going to be a new modded video coming out. So if you have enjoyed it, I thoroughly hope you have. Don't forget to join the Discord. We talk about modding in there as well. And if there's nothing else, I will see you guys in the next one.